No change. And Kogo and Thompson away. Just to just bring you up to date with the history of this, Craig Mottram won it last year, the Australian, and uh, Elliot Kipchoge the year before that, Mustafa Mohammed in 2008, and John Cabohan in 2007. With just five kilometres to go, the race yet to emerge between these two. And I just wonder, Thompson, who's got a personal best, what, of uh, 28.02, set last year, of course, but uh, he's a man who is really beginning to build in confidence ever since that uh, European Championship silver medal uh, last year. He's going well at the moment. Oh, just uh, Kogo deep in concentration, just looking down, and uh, just uh, there's a little bit of a gap there, a couple of metres or so, and I think this is a point at which, uh, you know, thompson has got to be weary because the Kenyans do have the ability to just put the pedal down and go. And, uh, and, and it's very difficult to, to respond to them. And this is a very long road, this, the Peniston Road. And uh, really, it'll be very interesting. I think there's a little gap opening up there. Now, Chris Thompson has got to come back and try and hang on as long as he can. Remember, he was uh, second last year to Craig Mottram. And uh, in the Great Manchester run earlier on this season, he was attacked very rapidly by Haile Grabisselassie, of course. And... Uh, I just wouldn't want the same to happen again. Well, pacemaker's gone, and the women, well, side by side, Gemma Steele and uh, Joe Pavey, both of them, way ahead of third placed Maria McCambridge. We believe she's still in third with uh, Rebecca Robinson in fourth, and the rest strung out way behind them. But Gemma Steele looks confident, doesn't she? Just trying a little bit here. She's the first time she's gone into the lead in this race. Well, she'll also know that she was uh, second in the Great Ireland run uh, in 33.03, a best 10K performance uh, earlier on uh, this season. So there's a lot of confidence coming from that, I'm sure. Nothing in it at the moment. Both athletes uh, looking and hearing encouragement coming from the side of the course here there's quite a lot of uh, attendance on the side of the course remember there are seven and a half thousand out on this course various points on the course and uh, that is uh, Nick Beer just going round at halfway and uh, the two women now are just beyond Hillsborough and looking now at halfway stage going back and uh, the uh, time gives you some indication it's going to be probably around about 33 minutes uh, this uh, run but this is a real effort I fancy by Gemma Steele to uh, get away from Joe Pavey if she can Joe I know is in heavy training there's no question about that oh look at this let's just uh, break off for a moment to look at the uh, Thompson and he's gone again and that's just what Haile Gabrielassie did to him in the great Manchester run he's got to learn from that but this is a man who's run close to 27 minutes he's run almost a minute faster well a minute faster than Chris Thompson um, and, and that confidence, of course, look how easy he looks. Absolutely flowing, Mika Koga. He really is. He's got a 10,000 metre best of 26.35.63. That was in Brussels in 2006. He's a real talent. Class on the track. It was uh, seventh in the World Championship, 10,000 uh, 10, metres last year, of course, in, uh, rather in 2009 in Berlin. And. Uh, well, his Olympic pedigree, a bronze medal, just tells you all about this man. And he's absolutely flying away now. And Chris Thompson, as the masses go past them on the, on the, in the other direction, of course, Co goes on his way towards the finish, and I think uh, that's how it's going to be. There's a good effort by Chris Thompson, though. Let's be quite sure about that. Um, he's been a man who's really lacked belief until he followed Mo Farah home in the European Championships last year in that 10,000 metres. It was a great run by him. How much comes from success in terms of mental uh, agility? It's psyche. The psyche is enhanced dramatically. But this young man looks very relaxed, doesn't he? Totally at home. And these two on the left, Gemma Steele on the left, Joe Pavey on the right, absolutely locked in battle now. Now, which one of them will be able to go away. Now, Pavey's got the pedigree, of course. Remember, a former fourth placer in the World Championships over 10,000 metres. Gemma Steele hasn't done that sort of thing in the past, but it's quite clear to me that she's having a very good season indeed. She was, uh, what, fourth in the uh, English National Cross Country Championships in February, then fourth in the Inter-Counties Cross Country Championships. So she's got a good grounding on the country as Gemma Steele with just four kilometres to go. And still, it's anybody's race, this. 
I just wonder this would be really a superb victory if she could beat Joe Pavey because Joe's come here as the favourite and desperately wants to go uh, to New York with a win under her belt. But this on the left, just look at Kogan now, just uh, stretching across to the right hand side of the screen, now to full screen. And this man has got about 40 metres, probably 30 metres on Chris Thompson. But Thompson, you have to give him credit, he's not letting go, he's hanging on and not desperately trying uh, not to allow Kogo to get away, terribly get away. And it's, it's, it's one of those situations where you know that you've got some sort of chance, but you know that the man in front of you is of a real pedigree. Kogo then absolutely drifts. Look how he floats along the road. Absolutely superb. Little glance, nothing uh, gained or lost by that. And uh, nothing uh, well, doesn't suggest that there was a worry in his mind because he looks so comfortable, doesn't he? But uh, Chris Thompson, a lot of credit. He's back, most certainly. Remember, let me repeat, didn't go to the World Championships in Daegu, was injured, couldn't really qualify, and, uh, well, he's now back, and it's good to see him. Next year's another year, and look at this, Gemma Steele. Now, has she made the break? Joe Pavey hanging on, a little grimace on that face, but Steele... Uh, really looking to get away from uh, Joe Pavey here. Remember, she was beaten by Joe by, what, 16 seconds in the London 10K earlier on the season. And this is a big uh, break. This is it. This is the break. And now can Joe Pavey respond to this? It's going to be a very, very tough final part of this race for Joe because that gap now is a difficult one. You're not close enough to really attack. Now, can she come back to Gemma Steele? Can she? Or can Gemma Steele notch one of her best victories in her career, if not the best victory in her career? She's certainly coming of age this year. There's no question about that. She's light, she looks fit, she looks good, she's confident. And uh, really, Joe Pavey now, with just two kilometres to go, has got a lot of work to do if she's going to come back from this. But at the moment, Gemma Steele looks very good indeed. Well, the break to me looks to be a positive one and I'm not sure Joe will be able to come back I, if you look at the Great North Run earlier on this season Joe didn't quite have the edge she said afterwards keeps glancing at a watch doesn't she probably thinking well hang on a minute is uh, Gemma Steele running faster than I thought she could or what um, but uh, certainly she hasn't got an edge that's for sure and I guess the heavy training would uh, result uh, would, that would be a result of heavy training but nevertheless she won't make excuses she'll say well done and this man look how far with that little downhill piece now uh, look how far he is ahead of Chris Thompson Mika Kogo of Kenya how often the Kenyans have run uh, like this second in New York uh, this year in the, what they call the healthy kidney 10 kilometers he was second in that and uh, he's done so well uh, throughout the world. He won a Cape uh, Elizabeth 10K also this season, so he's been around and uh, much sought after, actually, to uh, uh, make up uh, the elite fields in these 10-kilometer races and certainly the half-marathon races as well. But Mika Kogo has got away with Chris Thompson. I'm quite pleased for him. He's going well, and so has Gemma Steele. She's certainly got away now, and I think Joe Pavey won't have the speed, I don't think so. That's a deceptive picture because I think Gemma's a little bit further ahead than that picture indicates. And she really is, look at the face, she's so determined. She really wants this. Those shoulders a little bit tight, high, high, high arm carry, really working hard now. A really serious look on her face. She must be thinking, God, if I could win this, what a scalp I've taken. And I tell you what, that is a winning margin. That is definitely a winning margin for Gemma Steele beaten by 16 seconds let me say it again it's worth saying earlier on in the season but how she's come on but the two pathways for the season have differed tremendously Joe Pavey on route to a marathon and Gemma Steele well we'll see what she does on the track and uh, on the road races from this from this time onwards well look at the way that Mika Kogo is tacking sailor fashion from one side of the road to the other that's <laughs> I must admit, to do that on the hill means he's running a little bit further than 10 kilometres at the end of the day, but it's not going to worry him. It's outside 28 minutes, uh, well outside his personal best, of course. He's running well within himself, but uh, it really has been a very fine performance. And uh, when he broke away, it was a subtle break and gradually built on that break. And he's now heading down towards Arundel Gate, where he began and, uh, some 28 and a bit minutes ago. And 
England uh, to take uh, the win in this uh, great Yorkshire run. The fifth occasion that it's been run. And uh, we've got another Kenyan winner here. And uh, he's uh, looking very, very strong indeed. Looks as though he could have gone on forever. But the winner then is Mika Kogo of Kenya. 28.46 there is an unofficial time as he comes across the line. And a lot of credit to Chris Thompson. Well done to him. He's uh, looked uh, uh, with his injury problems. He's come back to some sort of fitness. Gained so much confidence from his performance in the European Championships last year. He's back on the roads at least. And that's good to see. Good for Britain too. Let's have a little look and see. Oh, look at this. Stuart Stokes and Andy Lemicello are battling it out for third place. I just wonder which one of those has got the sprint finish. Stokes is away at the moment. Looks as though he's going to take this. But Lemicello is coming alongside him. What a race. Look at this. Well, Lemicello, the marathon man now, the former steeplechaser, overtakes the current steeplechaser. And he's going to take third place. Yeah, Lemicello gets the third place. Stuart Stokes gets fourth. And uh, that was a very good race. Gemma Steele. Well, look at that. She's got away, and uh, that uh, break that she made will be giving her the best victory of her career, really. Joe Pavey, you can see her in the background there, alongside a pacemaker, and uh, but she's, what, some 50 metres or probably 50 metres behind, and that 16-second uh, defeat um, at the hands of uh, Joe Pavey early on in the season will be a, a faint memory now for Gemma Steele because she's uh, reversed it all in the best possible way. The final stages will uh, test her a little bit. This uphill part in the final stages, grimacing here, but uh, that hair flowing from side to side, just latching on there to one of the male athletes and uh, looking to go past and uh, head towards that finish in fine style. It really will be a good one, this. Second place in the Great Ireland Run, her best 10K position, finish position this year and this has gone one better this is going to be a best performance of the season without any question despite the fact that she won the UK uh, championship at half marathon this is uh, a defeat of a very very world well a fine athlete in Joe Pavey a world-class athlete I know she's uh, preparing for a marathon but nevertheless it's a very very fine run indeed and uh, heading down towards that finish has almost allowed herself a little smile there I, can't, I don't think she's looked round to see where Joe is, but uh, she'll certainly know that uh, she's got every chance of uh, taking this title, and, and, and there's no doubt she is going to take this title. And looking very, very strong indeed. Yeah, using the male athletes here, coming past them. She's not going to... Ooh, almost went the wrong way! Oh, say! Well, that was almost an error that could have cost her the race at Gemma Steele, but she almost went the wrong way, turned right, and then got into the right uh, direction. And my goodness me, look at that. She's won it. She almost went the wrong way in the final stages. I wonder what she thinks about that. Big smile at last. I've beaten Joe Pavey. Well, what about that? Her best performance. Joe grimacing a little, once again finding it a little bit tough. We saw that same look at the end of the Great North Run, where she was fourth just a few weeks ago. But nevertheless, second place. And, uh, well, we wish her well in the New York Marathon. It was a good run, but certainly it's taken more out of Joe than it has out of... Uh, Gemma, that's for sure. Well, let's bring you up to date with the result of the men's race. Mika Kogo, 28.45, Chris Thompson, 29.03, and Lemoncello, 29.57 in third. This morning, when I woke up, I see I need to, to be the winner because uh, I saw Sheffield winners still won, and I support. So that was a good omen yesterday, then winning. That set you up for today. Yeah, that's uh, true because uh, although I I got a strong challenge from Chris Thompson all the way from five kilometers, six kilometers, seven kilometers, then I started to break away because I see this guy can give me a tough challenge towards the finish line. He was just a better run on the day. I mean, he was more than a better runner because he was able to deal with uh, deal with my irritants behind him. Even he tried to do a little bit of weaving, which was annoying. <laughs> like, Stay in one spot. <laughs> but there you go. Well, anyway, like racing, isn't it? But it was a great run by Gemma Steele, 32:50. T. Joe Pavey, 33:12, and Maria McCambridge held on to third place, 34:39. Steel wins in Steel City, that's what I hoped anyway, so it's paid off, yeah. <laughs> you had that line ready, so you had to win that one, didn't you? Yeah, I know, yeah. I put it on Facebook and everything, so, <laughs> yeah. Did, did it help starting off with the men and having that pace to push you along? Um, yeah, 
yeah, I think um, I'm used to running with the men more, so yeah, it pushes me on a bit, and uh, yeah, it's nice uh, to have pacemakers in the race as well. Yeah, I found it really tough today. Um, didn't have my greatest run. I mean, I'm in hard marathon training. It's all new to me to be sort of racing on route to a marathon. But you know, having said that, all credit to Gemma. She's real talent coming through, and she ran really well today. Another super day of great run action here in Sheffield. Next stop in October will be the Booth of Great Birmingham run. That's over the half marathon distance. Then we move further south to Portsmouth for the Great South Run. For more information, please visit greatrun.org.